Hi there. So in this uh, screencast, what I'm going to do is walk you through a little bit on how to integrate custom post types with Timber. So where we last left things, you know, we've got this uh, home page going. We've got the listings of all of our posts, but we also have the custom post type that we're using here. So you can see pizza, which is stored oops, as a recipe. You can see that in the URL up here. Um, steak. These are actually custom post types. Right now they work um, being shown the same way as post, but obviously we might want to style these differently. So to do that, I'm going to hop back over to home main dot twig. So right now for post and post, in other words, it's looping through each post and using T's post dot twig. I want to allow ourselves to use the a custom post type file for that. So in this case, we're using recipes. So um, one thing I could do is replace this post here with a call to post.post .post underscore type. So it's going to use whatever post type and formulate a, um, a string to represent the file name. So to concatenate in Twig, it's actually a little funny to use the um, uh, tilde. So that is going to brace those together. So you might be used to PHP where it's dot or JavaScript where it's a plus sign. In Twig, you're using a tilde. So if I save and refresh this, I think, yeah, I'm going to get an error because right now I have T's post created, but I need to create T's recipes. So I'm going to create a new file and save it as T's. I'm going to fuck up the spelling, but let's see, R-E-C-I-P-E dot twig. Keys. So now it's teased recipes dot twig, and I'm just going to do a, a quick hello in here if I refresh. Okay, so I have test post, links post, header post, and then anywhere that I should be seeing a recipe, I'm getting hello. Um, so all we need to do is build this file now. So I'm going to go and actually start with you know some of the tags I had. Here, so I'm going to copy this kind of article tag, and you know since we're using post type, it's going to bring in recipes there instead of post and article. And let's say we want to make this pretty simple with just like the, a photo and a headline. So I'm going to do start with um, h2 for post title and h2, and above that. We're going to do an if statement for the thumbnail. So if post dot thumbnail and div, and inside of here, image source is equal to post dot thumbnail dot src. And that should be good for now. So let's go over and refresh. Oh, um, so that's really big. So let's resize that guy down to how about 600 by 300. There we go. And there you can see, again, we have all of the pictures being loaded. So of course I can keep customizing, you know, I think here I'm missing a link. So let's do a href uh, post. Yeah, I always forget the double post dot permalink and anchor and let's throw in a body so this is one of my favorite functions post dot get preview and how many words I want out there so let's say about 60 words Bingo. Look, looks, this is looking good. So I've got uh, the key pieces out there. The only thing I want to watch out for is um, right now I've kind of left myself vulnerable because what if I create a post type um, but I forget to create a corresponding template? Maybe I have, I don't know, an essays post type or something. Um, I just want to use the post style here. 
What you can do with includes is set fallbacks. And th this is a really nice little shortcut. If I change this to an array and add one more, so the fallback will be t's post.twig. Now I don't have to worry about um, whether or not I've created the custom template. It's always going to fall back to t's post. So in this case, when I refresh, it was able to find something for t's recipes. Um, however, if for some reason that was gone, like let's say I rename this to something else and I refresh, doesn't fail, it just falls back to T's, um, T's post. So that's a nice um, kind of way to prevent yourself from making too many mistakes. So 